Uh, good morning to all present. Uh, today on the eve of this international seminar, the theme of which uh, has been chosen beautifully, named as Crime Against Religious Minorities in South Asia, and Access to Criminal Justice System and the Rule of, rule of Law. As the theme, you know, forced us to think about the sufferings which has been faced by uh, the religious minorities in the South countries. So it gave a thought-provoking idea to me as all the inaugural session with me that all have started thinking over the point that today, when we have already been suffered with COVID-19 so much, we are still aggravating some other acts in the form of crime against the religious minorities. We have, are not, you know, um, uh, learning the lessons from pandemic that nothing is uh, forever. So we should stay in solidarity with each other. Now, on this note, I accord uh, a warm, thankful, warm thanks to all present over here. And I also uh, give greetings of the day to Honorable Chief Guest of the Day, Honorable Mr. Justice Kalwan Singh Ji, Guest of Honor, Professor Dr. Yuva Raj Sengrola, Special Guest, Shri S.P. Bansal, Shri Nishant Bansal, Shri Ankush Bansal, and most importantly, Seminar Patrons, Dr. Abdul Satar Abdul Rahman and Dr. Dharminder Patya. I'm very thankful to you, sir. You made me part of this uh, beautiful theme. So if I start uh, relating to the theme of the day, see when the world has suffered and still suffering from COVID-19 pandemic, the suffering kept on aggravating in the crime against religious minorities in South Asia. The rules, the laws seem to be insufficient or deficient enough to accord a control mechanism in the criminal justice system. What I understood by the theme, by the problem profile, and by the hypothesis uh, framed for the uh, uh, for the chosen theme, what I could uh, collect from the studies, from the notes, from the data, uh, you know, given on the, uh, on the on this theme, I could collect that uh, the act of suffering against religious minority actually is the act committed in one country has influenced uh, to the chain of events in the other country. If we look into the data. South Asia has a population of around 1.8 billion, uh, which constitute about one fourth of the humanity. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, Maldives, and Afghanistan are the countries in South Asia, and many of them are uh, Muslim majority nations. Although uh, India is uh, predominantly a Hindu nation, with a population of 1.4 billion, there are more Muslims in India than in Pakistan and in other. Uh, South Asian uh, nations. Hindus, Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, and followers of other religions have lived peacefully in South Asia for centuries. India, uh, officially, uh, the Republic of India is a country located in the southern uh, part of the continent of Asia. India is the world's uh, largest democracy with a rich tradition of secular uh, tourism. It is estimated population exceeds the 1.3 billion, but 79.8% are Hindus, 14.2% are Muslims, 2.3% are Christians, and 1.7% are Sikhs. And smaller uh, religious groups include Buddhists, Jains, uh, Bahiyas, Jews, Parsis, and non-religious persons in uh, India. So the Indian constitution, it has already established a nation of secularism. And Article 25 grants all individuals freedom of conscience, including the right to practice, profess, and propagate any religion. And the right to freely uh, choose and change one's religion is also protected by international law, as it is a right which manifests one's beliefs, the teaching those beliefs. Now, while uh, Article 18 of the International Covenant on Civil and Critical Rights, it protects individuals from coercion that would impair their uh, freedom uh, uh, to choose their religion or belief. The tension between freedom to spread one's beliefs and freedom of others to not to coerce is at the heart of an alarming majoritarian trend in South Asia. Over the last decade, governments across the South Asia have taken measures to prohibit religious conversions from uh, dominant religious groups. Often, uh, the motivation behind these laws, though not officially stated as such, 
It is to protect the dominant religion or uh, traditions from a perceived threat from the minority religious group. The methods of preventing conversions it vary. In India, there are several uh, state legislatures which has been adopted uh, uh, in reference to laws relating to conversion. They are from Hinduism. The national blasphemy laws are used to realize attempts by non-Muslims to convert into Muslims. And in India, Pakistan, and Nepal, governments are uh, uh, tightening their control over NGOs, especially of uh, foreign missionary groups. And South Asia has been caught in the cycle of religious violence. Oh. It is very important to note it here. The predictable cycles of religious violence in South Asia, it can be described fairly simple. First, a member of a religious or ethnic minority is accused of offending the religious sentiments of another community. In India, Muslim or Dalit men may be accused of slaughtering a cow. In Pakistan, a Christian woman may be accused of disrespecting the Prophet Muhammad, or a Hindu boy may be accused of urinating in a madrasa library. This violence of one country ignites retaliatory attacks where attacks on Hindus in Bangladesh led to attacks on Muslims in Tripura. Similarly, uh, the demolition of Babri Masjid, a medieval uh, mosque, by a Hindu mob in India in 1992. It triggered violence against Hindus in Pakistan and Bangladesh, as well as the many uh, religiously motivated uh, you know, programs had happened after that. This communal and religious harmony is important for the social, cultural, and economic growth of the countries. It is also imperative to protect human rights of all, and especially when it is minorities. If we look into the reasons that why the, there are crimes against religious minorities in South Asia, the one uh, biggest reason which I could trace out from the readings is that it is a demographical structure of South Asia. Eight countries, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Maldives, Nepal, India, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka, they together make South Asia and they are known as SARC. Now, South Asia has many major religions such as Hinduism, Islam, Christian, Jainism, Buddhism, and Sikhism. About 63%, which is the estimated 1 billion, of the population of South Asia are Hindus. 31%, about 600 million, they are Muslims. And the rest are Buddhist, Jain, Sikhs, Christians. Now, the Hindus, the Buddhist, Jain, Sikhs, and Christians are concentrated in India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Bhutan. Whilst the Muslims are concentrated in Afghanistan, 99%, Bangladesh, 90%, Pakistan, 96%, Maldives, 100%. Among uh, all these countries with a, uh, we may say, uh, dominant non-Muslim population, Muslim almost con constitute 14.5% of India, 12.61% of Sri Lanka, and 4.4% of Nepal. It is to be noted over here that Muslim-dominated countries Hindus constitute just 2% of the population of Pakistan, 9% of population of Bangladesh, and less than 1% of population of Af Afghanistan. Now, this religious demography of South Asia could be one of the reasons for religious discrimination in this region. Now, this concept of crime against religious minorities, it became a global theme now. With the advancement of communication, information technology, and the role played by the media, Minority religion were often described as fanatics, irrational, primitive, belligerents, and dangerous for modern society and other religions. There, there is a negative portrayal of uh, minority religion in many countries, including those in Asia, which influence the attitudes of common people. We, we may notice that. In South Asia, the series of various heinous terrorist attacks, especially in India, such as 2000. Uh, in 2000, uh, Red Coat attack, 2001, Indian Parliament attack, 2008, Mumbai, 2008, uh, bombing series in Delhi, and 2016, Yuri attack in Kashmir. Mostly, they were sponsored by cross-border uh, uh, terrorist organizations, and they fueled the concept of crime against religious minorities. So, India being the uh, largest and fastest uh, growing economy is real, uh, 82% share of the South Asian economy. It is the only member of powerful G20 uh, major economies from the South region. Any terrorist activity when it happens in India, it is widely covered. And it negatively affects 
the whole of the south asia so what i mean to say here that uh, if you relate all these incidences which happened in india then in pakistan in 2002 uh, that american journalist uh, daniel pearl and then 2002 karachi bus bombing carrying uh, french engineers engineers and in 2003 and 2006 attacks uh, which targeting us then in, in 2016 lahore suicide bombing targeting uh, christians and several other uh, such incidents these these are all you know where uh, extremist muslim organizations were primarily responsible further they expanded the concept of crime against religious minority what i mean to contend over here is that whatever happens in one country against the minority religion people it usually and oftenly influence uh, the series of crime against the neighboring country and they all are part of south south asia so that's why i noted over here that uh, it is the demographical and religious uh, uh, minorities population setup in south asia which could be one of the reason for crime against uh, uh, religious minorities and, and this is not the whole sole reason there are many other reasons in covid 19 when in the beginning we may see many um, uh, such incidences uh, uh, if you have uh, that there were hate speech against minorities in south asia region three out of six of south asian countries where muslims are in a majority namely india nepal and sri lanka all experienced an out of hate aimed muslim uh, muslims during covid 19 they were falsely blamed in all three countries for spreading the disease with anti muslim rhetoric and even calls for uh, uh, physical violence against them were quite common hazaras and shias two have and uh, have been targeted similarly in pakistan and afghanistan and dalits in nepal and bangladesh so if if we look into the state of south asian minorities nepal for example in 2020 during the covid pandemic at the beginning of pandemic the muslim community was uh, targets of unfounded generalized suspicions after news of some nepali muslims have been uh, quarantined in nepal after the uh, after that tablighi uh, uh, jamaat in delhi broke now this led to several acts of violence towards muslims in nepal which also spilled over uh, to christians so in pakistan again pakistan's minorities continue to be targeted and harassed by religious extremists with major attacks reported against shias and andians similarly you can take the example of bangladesh where christian bangladesh is facing unlawful eviction from their ancestral land due to their faith and various forms of uh, attacks on hindus attacks against uh, religious minorities based on social media post have also continued another group that has uh, faced uh, several discriminatory acts were rohingyas refugees in in, in bangladesh so in in covid 19 in afghanistan as well 40 million people though they are sunnis and hazaras they make up up to 9% of the country's population according to that non government organization minority group but still the majority religious groups they they you know they uh, continued to uh, commit crimes against the religious minorities in the same area in india being a being it is a multinational multi religious country the legal framework constitution it has, it has been strongly enacted there are uh, some anti uh, you know uh, there, there there are some uh, states where uh, the laws uh, the rules relating to conversion has also been framed fairly to avoid such acts but still they are on education has its own role the the fair education and the unfair education it is very important to know that how education is playing a role in it media or uh, media is playing a role in it so what i want to conclude or share with you over here is that when it comes to crime against women child and then crime against minorities the reasons somehow are inbuilt inculcated from the society itself it is always we discuss with the students as at home in public gatherings that religion though has been professed religiously but it is always a very very weak point of everyone's life it is on the name of religion many crimes can be committed it, it, it is on the name of religion your minds can be influenced and changed so uh, the need of the rs when we are concentrating on south asia being the theme is crime against religious minorities in south asia and the need is to strengthen the criminal justice system in order to provide justice fairly to all the groups of religion 
minorities and as well as by not be getting biased towards the majority so the south asia being having huge and diverse population crime against religious minorities is a matter which needs attention and the further study in this region is very very important to portray not a negative picture but a positive picture so the steps must be hardly had been hardly taken but it is to be taken by the governments relating to the issue concern of the day thank you very much for your time and this much i want to share with you i want to listen other speakers as well i think i have taken much of the time so finally i'm thankful to all the organizers to making me part of this event. thank you very much